G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the west side of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire, we've got a hut on the opposite side of the map, playing as the Red English, we have got the Mister. It is great to have him back. This is the second game in this series between these two guys. The first game, if you missed it, it was on Frisian Marshes. I think it's Frisian Marshes. I'm not 100% sure what the map is called, but it's a new map that's been done by Adney. It is in all the Red Bull, uh, the Road to Red Bull this week's. Uh, every single set has played it. So it, there's going to be a couple more games on the channel from that one. But I'm curious what you guys think of that map. Uh, if you haven't let me know already, uh, then please do. But let's talk a little bit about this game because we have got ourselves a bit of an interesting matchup here. This, of course, is Altai. Altai is a map that typically used to be very good for the English, but people quickly learned how to beat the English. So I'm curious to see exactly what Mr. has got up his sleeve here because I think this is going to be a bit of a tough matchup. Hut playing as the Holy Roman Empire. He has been... I mean, for anybody unfamiliar with Hut, in Australia, we are quite the meta setters, okay? Between Hutt and Iagos and, I mean, I, I would almost go to the extent of saying Snooper with his recent villager strategy. <laughs> These guys set the meta. Hutt was the original professional scouts enjoyers. He got on the deers very, 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 very early in this game. Uh, and he sort of came up with the Rus Fast Castle, the, uh, the Holy Roman Empire Fast Castle, all that kind of stuff. He pioneered that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what type of play we actually see out of Hut today because he's on the Holy Roman Empire and this is a civilization that he absolutely loves. He's very, very good with this Civ as well. So the question is, do we see a second town center coming out? If so, I'd love to see that. Honestly, I think a 2TC opening in this matchup is so smart uh, just simply because the English player typically wants to go for some sort of early aggression. You would expect that not only is there early aggression, but there's probably going to be... Well, that, that was almost close right there. That could have been that could have been a dead scout. Uh, and speaking of scouts, we do have two scouts out here for the mister. Um, but typically in, in this matchup, well, not in this matchup, but in general, the English love to go for that early aggression. That's something that we see quite commonly out. Mister going for a mill a bit of a delayed mill so i'm expecting that we're probably going to be seeing some sort of wheelbarrow uh maybe even some farms getting thrown down and there is the first farm thrown down at barely two minutes and 30 into the game so he's looking to diversify that food income nice and early but have a look at these have a look at this sheep opening we've got mister who's running a little bit dry on sheep so he might have to throw down a few more farms than he was hoping for it seems that way at least as he now cracks that nut that last sheep open that's going to be the last sheep that he's got, though. Uh, so it might be a bit of a delay for him. Still hasn't touched on that wheelbarrow just yet. Oh, you know why? Doesn't have the wood for it. Uh, he's adding in more farms. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that playing as the Holy Roman Empire here, you are going to want to go for a second town center, in my opinion, just simply because if you do, it's very hard for the English player to punish you. Now, of course, there are longbowmen that can snipe out villagers, all that, you know, jazz. But realistically... It's very difficult to actually deny the second town center as or as the English against the Holy Roman Empire, just because even if you've got one ram, one ram's not going to do it. You're going to need a second ram. And by the time that second ram comes around, highly likely that you're going to have reached castle age on your two TCs. And you're up to castle age now. And guess what? You got the you got the unit printer out. You got that Burgrave Palace printing out units nonstop. Uh, so I would expect that that's going to be the case here. But I'm curious to see exactly how Hutt plays it. It's going to be an Arkham Chapel in the back of his base. Uh, now, he could look to push these deer over towards his town center. I think that would actually be a really smart play, using his scouts to push the deer over towards this edge of the town center right here. And then that way he can use the Arkham Chapel to actually buff that up. Let's see if he does that now. He's heading out in the right direction. Going to be able to pick up that sheep uh, and might... Oh, I think he might be doing it. I think he might be doing it. He's coming around at least. Uh, now, keep in mind, he's got the second scout out over on this east side, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's looking to push in the deer. This is something that we see very often now out of Holy Roman Empire players. This was started by Wham and Puppy Paw, the two Canadian brothers. Uh, and they, they obviously pioneered that. Not, not really pioneered it, because it's more of a technique rather than a strategy. You can definitely say, like, Hutt pioneered the, the Holy Roman Empire uh, professional scout fast castle, because that's a strategy, whereas a technique like this... It, I wouldn't say that you'd pioneer that. You'd, you'd probably just uh, popularize it. 
Uh, but uh, but now we see Hunt is up to the next age. He's got plenty of wood in the bank. In in fact, he's got no stone whatsoever. So not going to be a two town center play. Could just be almost a direct fast castle here, uh, which definitely makes sense. But I guess one of the things you've got to be cognizant of is that English timing. Uh, if, if it doesn't hurt you, they can always just transition into feudal and not, not be too badly hurt. But now we do see that those those scouts are going to begin firing down upon the... Uh, Upon the uh, upon the deer below them, uh, and managed to take out the majority of them. We see that there are five deer, uh, two of which do remain uh, alive for now. But uh, he's just going to be casually collecting up all of the resources slowly but steadily. We don't see him going too heavily, uh, and does do a bit of hurting there with that villager. Brings it back in. He's got a single scout or a single uh, deer that's out a little bit further. We're going to see double houses thrown down over on that that west side as well. We'll tune in with the Mister and we'll see how he's going. So it's just going just to be a slow age up from him. To me, this indicates that he's thinking about just fast castling here. That's what that indicates to me is because there's only three villages here. Sometimes you would see six villages on here. This is a very curious uh, mill placement. I don't know if this is intentional. Interesting. I don't know why about that. Uh, I, I would love to know a little bit more about that decision, uh, but I can't explain that right now. Uh, but it looks like it's, it's going to be a bit of a suboptimal uh, position on those farms, at least for the moment. Uh, he's going to be able to come back towards the town center. He's not too fussed about deer. Uh, and so keep in mind, in this matchup, Professional Scouts really is a great technology. Just because typically you don't really care too much about these. And we can see now Mr. is just going to be... I, I don't even know what he's doing with, the, with these deer. He's just not... He's not bothering at the moment. Uh, but uh, is continuing to add in more farms. And we can see he's stacked up 300, almost four... Or in fact, more than 400 gold now. Uh, so he is looking to go heavy on that Castle H play. And we now see some walls coming in around the backside as well. Just to, wants to prevent any kind of harassment. Uh, and it does drop that down. Now ages up 6 minutes, 49 seconds. Can you believe that? Can Could you believe in a... In the lead up to a court or to a three hundred thousand dollar tournament, that we've got players aging up that late, uh, and and that's just th that's an eco age up as well. That's not a tower rush age up. That's just an eco age up. But now Burgrave Palace going to be coming down for Hut. Hut is looking to go absolutely ham, uh, and we can see ten villagers actually going to be placed down on this Burgrave Palace. So. You know, no second town center coming out for Hut today, at least not at the moment. Might be looking at, at going into a Burgrave, or not into a Burgrave, but into a uh, Swabia eventually. Uh, and we can see now he's got quite a heavy amount of villagers going over onto gold. So it's going to be a men at arm timing here. Now, I think as, as the English typically for Mister in this matchup, you would probably want to go quite quickly into a um, into a knight composition. I think that's going to be quite strong just because you would naturally expect men at arms coming out from the Holy Roman Empire player. So I think knights are going to make sense here. So we'll look to see how he plays it and whether he does that. Obviously, it's easy for the Holy Roman Empire player to, to transition from men at arms into uh, spearmen. But obviously, you've already got the Council Hall, which is going to help you out a huge amount. Now, interestingly, the Abbey of Kings. Do we dare mention the Abbey of Kings? Abbey of Kings actually would be pretty decent in this situation right now because if you're going up to the Castle Age, you know, you drop it down in front. If any of your your uh, units that get low, you just chuck them in the town centre. They're going to automatically repair while they're garrisoned. It's a very easy system. Uh, and uh, and it ma makes it, you know, especially when you're doing fast castles like this, where, you, where you're not putting any pressure on, where you're... The White Tower? What? <laughs> what? And look at the position. Is this is this a misclick? Has Mister misclicked right now? We gotta, you know, we gotta get a picture of this. Hold on a second. What is going on? The this is the weirdest White Tower I've ever seen. So maybe is the. Maybe is his plan. Okay. Maybe he knows, okay, that there is going to be a big push of men at arms that are coming in. So I'm just going to neutralize that. I'm not even going to make crossbows. I'm just going to neutralize that with the white tower. You look at the positioning on the white tower, right? It covers all of the farms. It covers the gold. Is he going fast imperial? I think he gets up and he, he starts making crossbows, right? Like he's got to just start making crossbows from the white tower. No, it's knights. Okay, let's get a let's get a shot of this. I, you know, I got to get a shot of this. The white tower. We don't. It is not often we see weird white towers like this bad boy right here. But it's coming out today. Look at that in all of its glory. The white tower shines. Uh, but uh, now those men at arms are making their way downtown. Like, uh, what's her name? Vanessa Carlton. Vanessa Carlton. Uh, so. Looks like no plus one... Oh, no. Plus one melee... Or plus one ranged armor is in. Plus two not yet in. Now going to be falling in underneath the town center. Also underneath that white tower as well. Going to be firing off 
underneath that keep. He's going to try his best to hold it together. Let's see exactly how he looks to play it. First Knight is going to be coming out as well. And you can see that he's managing to harass these villagers. It looks like one of them is going to be going down. I think that might be the first villager. I didn't see any that went down over underneath the town center, but I may not have been paying attention. Second villager, going to be careful here not to lose its life. Indeed, it's going to lose its life. And he's doing a decent job of just following around these villagers. But keep in mind, when it comes to, to what, what is he actually gaining here? Because he, sure, he's, he's gaining idle time. But re in reality, I definitely agree with Mister in that this has canceled out the play that came out from Hut, And I feel like if he had gone for King's Palace, he may have just died to this right now because Hut is unable to go underneath here. We can see those night numbers are sl slowly starting to move up. Behind these relics are being picked up. We do hear the prelates in the background now moving back with their two respective relics. Knights are doing a decent job coming in, just clearing this out. Keep in mind, they've got no ability to heal. There is no Abbey of Kings in this, in this build order right now. But the weird white tower, I mean, it, it is just... I guess it, it, it starts to make sense, doesn't it? The, the way that he's playing it. And you can see that this was part of the plan from the very beginning. Like, he left enough space here just to make sure he could cover his gold. Like, it, it was very careful base building because that's one of the things about Mister that you've got to understand, right? You can go back on this channel. I I, I'm, I'm not going to even guarantee you because I know for a fact. You go back and take a look at my video where we talk about Mister and his Rus build order. He's got an insane Rus build order back like eight months ago now for Age of Empires 4 and his base building is impeccable it is so perfect the way that he does it so I guarantee you everything here that he's doing it is a hundred percent thought out let's get another you, you just know I gotta do it I'm a sucker when it comes to stuff like this uh so everything there is thought out everything is methodically planned for Mister. so I would suspect even though it seems inefficient that there is a method to this madness but now that raid coming out, the bit of a boar in the middle as well. You're going to be able to pull relics back towards that outpost. Speaking of relics, it looks like the monastery's actually come up for our Holy Roman Empire player. Got three of those bad boys in there down towards the south. Going to be looking to pick up that fourth relic, fifth relic. Still yet to be picked up, but a bit of a raid coming through. We'll check in and see where those uh, where those knights are at the moment. They're just going to be hanging out for the moment. No fast no fast Imperial just yet for the Mister. Even if you go fast Imperial, what, what's the play if you do go fast Imperial? Do you just go straight into Wingard? Is that the play? You go straight in, into a, a Wingard palace and then what? You're just getting... Is that... You're getting your units from that? I guess that could work, but I don't know. Even here, I, I feel like... I guess technically you're, you're one TC, right? Like you're one TC up against one TC. The problem is the Holy Roman Empire player. He's got the relics though. And what do you have? I mean, you, you've got this... In, in this matchup, you've got the Supreme late game. That, that is a, a matter of fact, uh, just simply because of, of how strong you play. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think that like in, in this matchup, Rebaldequin is just a very strong unit. Um... The, the trebuchets obviously work very well against the culverin. It, it, it could be... It could, yeah. I, I think in the late game... I'm trying to, like, just work out the math in my head. And I'm like, I think in the late game, the English should beat out the Holy Roman Empire. English are, in my opinion, one of the... Not... not I would say the top two late game sieves. Obviously, China as well is up there. Even though English do actually counter China. I think China's probably better. Uh, more... How would I say? Like, more generally. But I think in this matchup, though... Uh, Eng English should beat the Holy Roman Empire in the late game. Uh, in the event that it does get there, but we'll talk a bit more about what's happening right now because the men at arms are getting completely destroyed here by these knights. These knights are going to have to fall back just because they appreciate the fact that, uh, that they're outposts that are firing down upon them as well. We take a look and there's still no armor or no upgrades coming through. Plus two ranged uh, armor going to be coming through as well for Hut though. Uh, but Mister yet to get any of his upgrades. We'll take a look at how Hut is doing back in the base. Uh, and, uh, I mean, everything going well for him at this point in time. Four relics now. Fifth relic, still yet to be captured. He does know where it is. He spotted it on his map. Just not interested in picking it up just yet. Little Knight trying, trying to escape. He's going to be able to get out. Now, now you can actually see the usefulness of the Abbey of Kings. And this is something that the Muslim does really well. Uh, so you can see all of these units that are low health. He would just take take these units that are lower health and just move them back to the town center. And they would all heal up exactly the same way the French Knights would. The only difference is they heal up much faster than the French Knights. The consequence is that you, you can't keep them out on the field. You're actually going to take them back to base. But now in the middle of the map, Knight's going to be able to clean up on these heavy men-at-arms. Keep in mind the men-at-arms have got that extra damage against heavy units as well because they've got those big damn maces. So he's going to be able to take out these, these knights if he's not careful. Two knights actually going down here. So not doing their best up against this. Uh, but uh, does manage to take out a fair amount of those men-at-arms. 
And numbers not looking bad for the mister at this point. I mean, everything's looking good. The, the main thing is that he's only sitting on that one town center. Um, he, he's gathering up some stones, so it could be the, the potential second town center that he is thinking about. Uh, but at this point, still only the one TC. And he uh, is at a significant disadvantage when it comes to the relic count as well. So do keep that in mind. A four to one relic dis or difference is, is quite large. And at the moment, he doesn't even have the one. He's just, he's on a four zero. Uh, and that, that's not a pretty spot. Village account, 43 for the mister. Uh, when we compare that over to his opponent, Hutt, he's sitting on 46. So definitely a big economic lead towards Hutt. See that gold starting to stack up for him as well. Nine villages on gold. Probably more than enough when you're just making spearmen and men at arms. But now behind it, it looks like the knights could be coming through. We don't see any of those melee or any of those uh, defensive upgrades coming through the melee defensive. We do have plus one uh, melee attack though coming through for Hutt, our Holy Roman Empire player. And things starting to look good for him. Honestly, I, I feel like from Hutt's position... Oh my god. He's making crossbows. This is kind of wild. So you, you very rarely, <laughs> very, very rarely actually see the Holy Roman Empire make archery ranges, let alone crossbows. Uh, so I, I suspect this is probably going to take... I, I suspect this is going to take uh, Mr. Off Guard when he spots this out. You know, it, it, it's definitely one of those strange things, but it, it's going to be easy for Mr. to walk into a counter here or, or to move into a counter. So option number one is horsemen. Option number two, longbows. You can see he's training up plenty of longbows. He's got longbows pushing out as well. These guys have got their veteran status as well. Uh, so he's going to be able to pick off Th those counters quite effectively. This is a decent combo here from Mister. But now, going to be coming out. You can see the longbows firing down upon them. They've got eight, eight damage. Uh, compare that to the men at arms, which have got a total of six ranged armor. So the longbows barely do anything to them. But the longbows do very effectively counter the veteran spearmen. They not only do they get that bonus against light melee infantry, but there's a lot less armor on those spearmen as well. Down towards the south. Looks like a wolf going to get picked up. Knights managing to make their way back. And remember, I mean, this is something that we, we were just talking about. When it comes to those knights, you know, how nice would it be to just have all of these knights running back towards an Abbey of Kings? Imagine if there was like an Abbey of Kings in the middle or something like that. That would be absolutely poggers. Like, when you think about it, you could just take these units back around to the middle. Boom. Heal them back all up. And they're, they're just, you know, back to full health. Takes a lot more efficient trades. Uh, but obviously, having the Council Hall enables you to transition into longbows a lot easier. And that's something that Mister is doing. So he's going to get great use out of that. Typically, you'd have to make two archery ranges, 300 wood. It's a fair it's a fair bid to bite. You know, that, that's, that's the equivalent of like, what, eight farms for the English. So it's a fair amount. A fair amount. But now longbow is going to get caught out of position here. Crossbow is going to do a decent job as well as of dealing out damage. Going to be able to do the bit of a fadeaway shot right there as he takes out a spearman on the retreat. Over towards the east, we do see that those outposts... I don't think... Oh, no, he does have Springwood upgrades on the first one. The second one doesn't have any upgrades. mister has got to be careful here. You can see he's might have bitten off more than he can chew. Those Holy Roman Empire units are going to be running faster than the normal units. And longbows, as they are, uh, just run slower than any other archer. So it's a little bit dangerous to be going into this. Uh, Spearman, obviously a great counter up against these uh, against these knights, but also going to be working wonders there. Back on the, the stone mine, it looks like a nice little raid coming through from Mister. He's trying to buy himself a little bit of time, force these units to come back. But the mass here, not looking that healthy from Mister. Ideally, you'd love to see him even go for a little bit of a split here. He's reinforcing units, though, trying to bring them back in. And now looking to try and mass up this position. He's 110 health on these, these Spearmen. You can see that the, the longbows are trying their best, and it looks like he's going to be able to, to hold on for this point. Uh, village account at the moment, 52, 35 military versus 51 and 43 military. But we do see a lot of villagers moving forward for Hutt. I suspect this is going to be a forward keep that is dropped, and he did go for it, but it does get cancelled immediately. He's just fearful about the position. Comes up a little bit close up, drops that one down. It's a pretty much on the front line here. And now the crossbows together with the spearmen and men at arms moving up, looking to try and take this down. Men at arms defending up against those knights on the front line. And we see the, uh, the uh, archers or the longbowmen just taking off those crossbows on the backside. Knights continue to come in, looking pretty decent, pretty healthy here. But the numbers here aren't looking that good for Hutt. He's going to have to fall back. It looks like he's brought just enough villagers because I think this keep is going to get up. And with that keep getting up, it means that all of the crossbows will stay alive. You would have seen that the crossbows might have gotten picked off there uh, very, very slowly by the longbows or by, by the knights, but it's not going to be the case now because that keep is up. And with that keep coming up, you're going to see a siege workshop getting dropped down straight away, and we are going to be jumping into some immediate trebuchets. And that is going to be a very difficult position for Mister to hold onto. Now, he's going to have the ability to make trebuchets himself, uh, but the problem is that he's going to need to start getting up towards numbers of about two, three trebuchets. 
and then you start playing the game that Hut wants, and that's the siege. That's the siege game, baby. That's exactly where Hut wants to be. He's micro. When it comes to the siege, is quite impeccable. Uh, so you've got to be careful getting into that sort of game with him. But uh, we'll look to see how Mister plays it and whether he goes into those trebuchets or not. Uh, because that keep on the front side is going to just allow Hut to just sort of gain control of this position. We take a look from Mister's perspective. You can see he's going to try and do a couple of run buys here. He does have this gold down on the south side as well. He's had a pretty decent gold spawn here for him. But men at arms are coming down. Hut has found it out. He knows that that gold is going to be getting mined somewhere. He must have run out eventually. And indeed he did. And now he's coming down to this position. No walls on this south side are going to mean that this gold is interrupted very, very shortly. Men at arms looking to chase away the knights in the center of the map as well. Villagers eventually going to get pulled. And now we can see the consequence of failing to wall down on this south side. You can see it's a bit of an awkward spot to have actually walled across. I, I guess realistically, you might have been able to go here and here and down like that. But it's, it's a bit of a hard spot. Now those villagers will fall back. He's got... Cro or he doesn't have any crossbows rather he's got veteran longbows as well as a single knight but keep in mind on that front side he's still being attacked first trebuchet is going to be coming out for the mister but by the same token we can see this first trebuchet already out for hut here second trebuchet is on route and now the next keep gets placed down and with that there could be a potential snipe coming through trebuchet going to be trying its, its best to retarget Gonna be able to land the first boulder. Oh my lord, that was absolutely so damn close. That must have brought it down to less than 100 health. That was, it, it looked like it, I, I could, I couldn't even see the, I couldn't even see the blue line, but it looks like it's come back though. He's brought it back in for now. Villagers are doing a good job to get that back up. We see the raid going back in on the other side. Mister, unfortunately, attacking a couple of houses there. So a little bit distracted. Obviously, there's quite a lot going on. He's managed to clear out this raid down towards the south, but unfortunately for him there's a lot of units on this front side coming in underneath the town center mister going to be falling back unfortunately for him there's nowhere to fall back to the trebuchet going to be going down with that trebuchet going down it means this keep remains up and good game gets called mister taps out and takes this series to 1-1 one, one. hut is the victor here and what an absolutely close series it is between these two guys fellas if you've enjoyed this cast make sure you check out the next game coming up in the series because you damn well know it's going to be number three baby